Hi guys, Russell here, welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be creating some custom sculpting brushes for use in Blender. Uh, in order to do so, you're going to want a photo editing software. Uh, I personally use GIMP. It is free and open source, much like Blender, and it is available for download without sign up. It uh, has a lot of the features of Photoshop and it's completely free. Okay, so once you have GIMP installed, go File, New, and I would recommend uh, creating a file that has square dimensions and a power of 2, so something like 512 by 512, 2048 by 2048. There's some advanced options there to play with resolution, uh, transparency of the background, color. I'm going to go with mostly default here. So we have a transparent background image. And to start off, I'm going to fill the first layer with black. I'm going to go down to the bottom right and create a new layer. And it's on this layer I'm going to use the airbrush tool uh, to paint pores. So this first brush I'm going to be making is going to emulate uh, the pores on the skin. So here with the airbrush, I'm playing with parameters like the radius and the softness or hardness of the edges. Just going around the, the image now. Placing dots randomly. I'm going to play with the radius just to give some variation on the pore sizes. Generally with these images and the brushes, white is going to give height and black is going to give depth. You also have uh, the option in Blender to invert these brushes. So anything you paint white here could in fact be black if you wanted it to be and vice versa. Okay, so just doing a quick save there. And once you're happy with the pattern, you're going to want to go up to the filters, go to Blur, and select Gaussian Blur. Play with the slider just to soften the edges a little bit. And then you can go File, Export As, Save as a PNG file. So that should be ready for use in Blender. Here you can see I'm just creating another different style of brush that's going to emulate wrinkles of the skin. So I've just taken an image off Google and traced out the wrinkles on a separate layer in white. And then here you can see I'm applying the Gaussian blur again just to soften the edges. Generally with a brush you don't want um, the edges to be too harsh. Okay, so you're going to want to export that as a PNG file, file export as. And here you can see I've just done a number of different brushes. Um, these are kind of emulating sci-fi panels and bolts and screws and vents. I did all this in GIMP. I'm just using different shades of white, gray, and, and black um, to create different levels and, and shapes and, and whatnot. So you could do something similar as well. And these can all be exported to Blender as a brush, as you'll see very shortly. So going over to the Texture Properties tab on the right here, I'm going to click on New and then Open. And you're going to navigate to that PNG file that we just created. Here's that Pores file. And you're going to want to click on that little Shield button. It's called Fake User. I'm going to cl click it here and also up above. And that's going to enable you to save this brush and its settings to this particular file. And that way you can later append it into different files and um, basically speed up your workflow a little bit. So these brushes uh, you can reuse in files going forward. Okay, so up to the active tool, you can see that the texture is loaded up there. You want to have that little check mark on the shield button. 
As long as you see that, you'll know that it will be saved to this particular file. And that way, again, you can use the append function to use it in the future. So just testing it out on the sphere here, turning off the symmetrical brush, turning on subtract. You can see I both get the height and the depth with the same brush, which is an interesting effect. If you wanted to add uh, the wrinkles brush, let's say, go over to your texture properties panel and then click on this little button here, new, and recommend trying to name your brushes. I'm going to call this one wrinkles and go over to the open image, navigate to where you saved it and open. And there you have it. Make sure that you tick the fake user shield button. And here just playing around with different parameters, the strength, generally with wrinkles, I want the strength to be quite low. I like to use, uh, change the mapping to area plane and the stroke method to anchored. You can also play with the fall off. This is really important. I'm going to change the look with the wrinkles. I want it to be quite flat and this is going to change the, change the softness of the brush. So here we go. You can see the wrinkles coming into play here. Again, you can play with the strength and fall off and add or subtract uh, to get different looks. Back over to the texture properties panel, let's add one more. Clicking on new, let's add a hard surface screw. We'll call it screw one. Click on open, navigate to where it is. There you have it. Click on the fake user shield button again to save it to this file. And again, you can play with the strength and addition, subtraction, the mapping, stroke method, and fall off. So probably the more basic parameters to change. And there you have a, a screw very easily. So that's kind of the benefit of these brushes. You do it once and you can use these going forward on any of your sculpts. So I'll play and add some more, some more brushes. Make sure you save this file, save it something like brushes. And this file will contain all the brushes that you create in GIMP or in any other software. So when you go to File New and you have a new Blender file, what you can do is go to the File Append, then navigate to the Brushes Blender file that you had, and then go to the Brushes folder at the top. And in this folder, you're going to see a lot of the default brushes. But if you named your brushes, you may be able to see uh, some of the names that you assign. So here we have uh, panels, pores, and different screws. So selecting all those, you can press append. Now, because we were in the sculpt draw brush in our brush file, they're all going to be attached to that particular brush. And there you have it. You can see that they're all attached to this one brush. And I have it particularly uh, set to a hotkey X. So when I go to the active tool and check the texture button, as I press X, I'm basically cycling through the brushes under the sculpt draw. So you can see all the ones I've made there and they're all in this file ready for use. Each of the settings here, the strength, the addition, subtraction, fall off, uh, mapping, stroke method, you name it, it is all saved. And so once you kind of dial in the, the settings that you want, um, you don't have to redo it each time. So there you have it guys, I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions, thanks.